Texas, starring Beverly McKenzie. I'll be there with an ambulance as soon as I can. Oh, please, hurry, hurry. I think he's dying. Vicky, stop it. Now tell me, how is Stryker's breathing? Oh, it's, uh, it's, it's been so labored. Oh, please. Uh, no, hurry, just, Captain. Vicky, Vicky, I'll be there as fast as I can. Now, if Stryker stops breathing, if his heart stops before I get there, oh. remember your CPR training. Oh, oh, no, Kevin, I don't think I no, can. Vicky, you I have got to. Now, I've got an ambulance waiting. I'm on my way right now. Oh. Stay with him. Hurry, Kevin, please don't let him die. Stryker. Oh, Stryker. Stryker, don't die. Please. Don't let me destroy you. Not like this. Oh, Stryker, don't leave me. You can't. You can't. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I didn't hear you. Sorry, I was drinking. I'm sorry for everything I've done to you. Only please don't die. Please, dear Lord, don't let him die. Don't die. What do you want me to do? Get down on my knees and, and say it again? Do they still do it that way? No. Look, I never did this before. I've, I've never asked a woman to marry me. A few have asked me, but I... Are you sure, Clipper? I mean, after all those girls, why me? Hey, you know your biggest fault? Underrating yourself. You've been Alex Wheeler's shadow for so long that you don't think of yourself as a real person. Don't go attacking Alex, huh? Not now. I'm not. And believe me, I'm just trying to make you see yourself as you are, what you've always been. Terry, look at me. You were the only woman who ever cared for me. Not Clipper Curtis, the oiler halfback. Not Mr. Curtis, owner of the top of the world club. Just me. I love you. I'm Just scared. tell me you don't love me, and I'll turn around and walk out of your life. Forever. That's all you have to do, Terry. I mean, say it. If that's what you want to say, say it. Clipper, you know I love you. I've always loved you. Well, then say you'll marry me. Clipper, I, I, I can't make that decision you right can't. now. What is this? You love me, but you can't marry me? Oh, I get it. Yeah. Since Alex fired me, you're having second thoughts, huh? Okay, I'm a lousy risk. Clipper, you're putting words in my mouth. You know I've never cared about money. You never did, when I had it. And I still don't. Look, I always said we'd be better off without it, that we'd get along just fine, if we wanted to. And now I want to, and you don't. It figures. Well, whatever I had, I've, I've lost it, haven't I? No, I'm confused. Can't you Don't see try to Clipper? explain. It's all right. Don't bother, Terry. You know, somehow I always thought you'd stick with me. What a dumb idea. So long, sweetheart. Clipper, don't go. still around. Heard his chopper a little while ago. I had to play for the horses to get him quieted back down. Ryan's gone already. Maybe you could play for me and quiet me down. Love to. 
You gone so soon, huh? Uh, those folks don't stay in one place too long, do they? No, he had to get back. What's his big hurry? He's leaving Houston. He's he's going to tank here. Hmm. Isn't that where Mike had his big oil refinery? How come he's going there? I mean, didn't they, didn't they just have a, a, a big revolution there? Aren't those new guys kind of down on Americans? Yes, they are, and that's exactly what worries me. Ryan was very close to the Sheik and his daughter. Before the Sheik was murdered, he promised that he'd take care of her. She in trouble? Well, she may be. That's why he has to go over there. He's not with the State Department anymore or anything. It's, uh, it's personal. Yeah, I can understand. Sure is convenient. Exactly what is that supposed to mean? Oh, nothing. You know, I was just thinking. Ryan came to Houston and, well, he really found it pretty tame. Cowboys stick to punching cows. And the Indians are all gone, They're working on the oil fields. So he had to go up to Tankier, where folks are still knocking each other off. Seems like some people got to be where bullets are whistling around them to let them know they're still alive. Max, I told you it's not the adventure. I told you why he went. Yeah, I know. An old tie, an old debt. Like the one Mike had to Tankier. That debt kept the Marshall family wealthy for a very long time and kept this ranch running. Yeah, yeah, did it that. But then in the end, it killed Mike, didn't it, Jenny? It was the risks in the oil business that killed Mike, not Tank here. Oil in the city. You know, you can't just roll back the years like a blanket, Max. It's been a long time since the only way to get around was on horseback, and the only place to live was on the land. Yeah, ain't that a crying shame? You know, sometimes I sit on this porch at night, look over at Houston. The sky over there just glows and pulses like the flames of hell. Or the candles of heaven. No, no, not those fires. No, they're only candles to people who fly into them like moths. Like Justin, Ricky, maybe even Ryan. They fly into them just like they're going to their lover's arms. When they get there, they find they're in hell. Max, will you stop it? I told you it's not for the excitement and adventure. Ryan has a debt to fulfill over in Tank here. And if the princess is safe, then he's coming back. And he's going to stay. Willie, you really think you can give up all that excitement? Huh, here today, Algeria tomorrow, maybe Rio the day after? Yeah, some folks would say that'd be a lot to pass up. I'm sure he can. It doesn't mean anything to him anyway. Well, we'll see, won't we? count on me. You know that. I know I used to be able to count on you before Alex fired me. Clipper, what you did was wrong, but it isn't fatal. You thought you were doing what Alex wanted. <sighs> but you don't have a bad heart. I know that. I love you. Sure. I love you too, baby. 
those are just words. And words don't always mean what they say, do they? Like, what you really mean is, I love you, but not right now. Come back when you're in the chips. No, I always mean what I say, and what I'm saying is that I love you. And I do want to marry you. Terry, if you're just saying that because of a sense of duty, forget it. You don't owe me a thing. All debts are canceled as of now. Clipper, don't twist my words. <sighs> love is not a debt that we owe. It's sharing. Yeah, well, I don't have too much to throw in the kitty. Maybe you'd be better off without me. Look, if you want me to keep on walking, I will. Just say the word. The only thing I want you to do is to walk into my arms. You know I want to be your wife. That's what I want to hear. That's what I need to hear. More than anything else in the world. Pressure reading. Right. Come on, quickly, please. Is he, is he alive? Kevin, tell 90 about location, alive. Doc. His pulse rate is 40. He's alive, Vicky. Oh, thank God, thank God. Oxygen. Oh, God, if, he, if he had died, it would have been my fault. I'd never forgive myself. All right, get him on the stretcher into the ambulance. Heaven, so is he going to be all right? The life support system when we get in. Yes, don't we need a history and a name? He's my patient. Now move quickly, please. Right, Doc. Come on. Oh, Kevin, he's going to be all right. When you get to the hospital, you'll be able oh, to do Vicky, something. Vicky, Vicky, listen to me. This might be the moment we've all expected. It's going to happen sooner. Oh, no. Come, come on now, Vicky, Vicky, take it easy. We haven't given up. We're going to fight for him. Do you understand? Oh. We're going to fight for him. Kevin, he can't die. Now, Vicky, he if you're coming die. to the hospital with us, get a coat quickly, all right? Oh, right away. Come on, come on. All right, move it. Let's go. Come on. Kevin did leave the hospital. I want to hear all of that. Well, Mrs. Cook, right after I talked to you, a woman came into his office. And you told me I had an overactive imagination. <laughs> well, I, uh, I guess I owe you an apology then, because it wasn't long before the two of them came out together. All smiles. Ha, oh, with the suitcase. Uh -huh. Now, how could you ever guess? Yeah, it certainly looked like your husband was on his way to uh, Nest for the night. Well, don't keep me in suspense. Who is she and where did they go? They didn't. He went off with an ambulance. Just as he and the lady were about to leave his office, he got some call and then he hightailed it on down to the emergency room. Kevin doesn't take ambulance calls. Maybe he saw you following him and he, and he was trying to lose you, huh? <sighs> Not a chance. I followed him down to emergency I saw him get into that ambulance myself. Hmm, that's strange. Then, of course, everything Kevin has been doing the last few months is strange. Well, you just wait at the hospital. He'll, he'll be back. I can imagine Kevin taking an ambulance call. Not unless it was an awful special patient.
course he's not home. He wouldn't want to stay in Vicky's house now that he knows the truth about her. He's probably packed up his things and left her like she deserved. He's probably on his way over here right now. Why wouldn't Stryker call me if he was on his way back here? Didn't Vicky answer? Damn, where are they? Now, who could Kevin possibly? Oh, I gotta stop this. I gotta stop thinking like that. I mean, just because no one's home, it doesn't. Now, the next part of Texas. Uh, Vicki, will you wait here, please? There's a lot to be done for Stryker, and it has to be done quickly. Look, I'll tell you what. As soon as we get him on life support and his condition stabilizes a little, I'll come back and tell you how he's doing. Oh, Vicky, will you call Rena? Tell her to get here as fast as she can. I know she'd want to be here if... It's that bad. He's still alive, but it's as bad as it can be, short of... Will you call her? I'll call. How can I tell her that her father... I know. It's going to be difficult for her. But she's got to know. Could you change this for me, please? I have to make a phone call. But, but please, it's urgent. Oh. Yeah. Sure. Well, just let me see. Uh, here, here. Take that. Oh, thank you very much. Strike her. It's his heart. Oh no. Oh, I, I was so afraid. I I could I could feel it. How bad is it? It's very bad, Rena. He's not gonna die, is he? Uh, I, I I don't know, but Kevin's here and he's doing everything he can. He said to tell you to get over here to Gulf Coast Hospital and hurry. Necking after 9 p.m. That's one of the pool rules. 
Oh, yeah? Uh, which one? I don't see it. It's because it's too dark to see, but it's number 13. <laughs> Doesn't matter if it is. I never play by the rules anyway. I mean, I never used to. But since I've been hanging around your big sister here, I'm changing my ways. Aren't I, Terry? You'd better. Going back into football? Nah. Going into a much rougher game, where the fights take place in the bedroom and the kitchen, and the blood you spill may be your own. Does he always talk like that? <laughs> He's just kidding, Rick. Well, tell him. <laughs> you come on. Um, Clippers asked me to marry him. We, uh, we thought we'd make it legal. Well, come on, honey. I mean, why beat around the bush? But this isn't the 50s. Your little brother here is all grown up. I'll bet you've got a uh, string of broads down there in Marshall County, haven't you? I heard you tell me he's asked you, but uh, I haven't heard your answer. What is this? Do they still arrange marriages down in Marshall County or what? The uh, whole family has to approve of the groom? I mean, I knew you came from the sticks, but uh, isn't that a little far out? Yes, Ricky. This is something I've wanted for a long time. I just don't want to see you make a mistake and end up hating yourself and the guy you're married to. Like some people I know. No sweat, little brother. I know what a treasure I got here. And I'm planning on great things for the two of us. I'm going to hold you to that, Clipper. Don't worry, Ricky. Clipper will take real good care of me. <laughs> I'm real happy for you, Terry. Look, bro, I want to wish you and Terry all the best of luck. Thanks, buddy. You know, I could get real used to this. <laughs> Isn't that what marriage is all about? Don't worry, baby. I'll be on top again. I'm not worried about that. All I want is for us to be together. Shall we set a date? Hey, let's not get all in a rush. Let things work themselves out a little first. I'd, uh, I'd feel kind of uneasy setting a wedding date before I get my next paycheck. OK. I can wait for that. fired me, I felt like a uh, trap door had been opened and there was nothing but 50 stories of open space beneath me. Yeah, that must have been frightening. The only time that was worse was when I was laying on the 40-yard line looking up at the blue sky and using everything I had not to scream. I never thought there was that much pain in the whole world. When I got out of that hospital, I knew behind all those drugs there was one pair of smashed knees. Hell, I thought I'd go through life with legs so stiff people would think I was walking on stilts. Well, I'm glad the doctors could patch you up again. Yeah. Miracles of modern medicine, huh? But you know who really saved my life? Surgeons. No. You did. No, it's true. I swear it, honey. <laughs> I mean, you came to the hospital every day with books and cards and gossip. I don't see how you had time to do it with all the other stuff you had to do. Well, it was easy, Clipper. I loved you. And then when you talked Alex into giving me that job at the top of the World Club, well, it, it gave me a reason to live. I was somebody again. Clipper, you were always somebody, huh? You just lost yourself for a little while, that's all. And the girl who found me is right here in my arms. Somehow you always make things turn out right. And they'll come out right this time, too. You'll see. When we marry, everything will work out. You bet, baby. <laughs> Boy, I'd like to be a fly on the wall when you tell Alex. Tell him what? That you still believe in me. That you're going to marry me, even if he did spring the trap door on me. Well, Alex will be very pleased for us, in spite of everything. <laughs> oh, yeah. He'll turn car wheels. 
I mean, he thinks the world of you and thinks I am hey, the... Hey, hush, huh? You'll see. I'll convince him that it's right. If Alex cares about me and he wants me to be happy. Yeah. I guess you're right, baby. That's real pretty, Max. I can't think of anything nicer than being out here on the porch listening to you play. <laughs> Me either, Max. Well, thank you, ladies. I remember you said that, Jenny. I, di I didn't mean... <laughs> I know what you meant. And I heard what you said. Well, if you all excuse me, I got a day and a half lined up tomorrow. Oh, I was just going to say the same thing. Kate, there's no reason to keep me in line. I haven't stayed up late in a long time. Oh. Good night. See you in the morning. All right. Good night, Jenny. Good night, Max. Well, I see Max isn't going to let you forget. Forget what? That he's here and Ryan isn't. I reckon I'll be hearing him serenading you out here on the porch every night while Ryan's gone. Oh, Kate, it's not like that at all. Oh, isn't it? Huh. I guess I can see what's going on. Max and I are just friends, that's all. I like Max very much. But Ryan... Oh, I know, honey. You don't even have to say it. They're just two different kinds of men, that's all. Now, Max is solid as the walls of the Alamo, slow to change, and always there when you need him. And Ryan? Oh. oh, honey, I can't help but love that boy, too. He's Ulysses, the wanderer. He's seen the cities and the ways of men. One's always here, and one's always gone. <laughs> Oh, honey, I don't know whether to envy or feel sorry for you. You know, most women have to settle for a man who will just be decent to them. They pick between one dullard and another. But you, well, you've got a lot harder choice. You've got to decide which one is the best. Up to you, fine young man. Oh, Ginny, love, now don't look so sad. You don't have to make that decision tonight. Come on now, get on up to bed. Good night, Kate. And thank you. Where's Stryker? What have they done to him? I want to see him, and I want to see him now. Well, I'm afraid this is one situation you can't dominate, Mina. Your father's in intensive care. Well, at least he's not in your care anymore. Where's Kim? Why can I never find him when I need him? He's with Stryker. He'll be out in a few minutes. He better be. All right. What happened? What did you do to him, Vicky? That's not the question, Rena. The question is, what did you do to him? Daddy was fine when he left my house. What happened to him after that? What did you show him before he came home? Nothing he couldn't see with his own two eyes any day of the week if he wanted to. You showed him those pictures, those rotten pictures of Alex and me. You couldn't resist it. So what? Always been your attitude, hasn't it? Whatever Rena wanted, damn the consequences. No matter what it cost or who it hurt, just full speed ahead. Well, whenever it comes to getting your own way, you're no slouch yourself, Mother. 
You were willing to pay a pretty hefty price to keep those pictures undercover, weren't you? Yes, I was. Maybe too great a price. Well, I'm surprised to hear you say it. So your precious reputation does mean more to you than anything living or breathing, doesn't it? Your re my reputation? <laughs> Is that why you think I gave in to your demands? Oh, no. I meant every word I said at the club that day. I went to see your father to tell him all about Alex. Oh, you did? Well, then what stopped you? Kevin. Ha ha! My dear husband, you two have gotten quite chummy, haven't you? So it was Kevin that talked you into it. Yes, but not the way you think. He told me that Stryker was slipping and badly, and that a sudden shock could kill him. That's a lie! Daddy told me himself he was all right. Because that's what you wanted to hear, and the poor dear man couldn't deny you anything, even if it might cost him his own life. I don't believe you. That, that's something that you and Kevin made up, isn't it? Oh, please quiet down. Oh, you're the one that's lying, Rena. And to yourself. You refused to believe Kevin when he told you how ill Stryker was. You knew what it would do to him when you showed him those pictures, but you just didn't care. You really hate me, don't you? You hate me more than you love Stryker. You just didn't care. And now you may have just killed your father. I wanted to be here to help Kevin, if you needed me. Thank you, Courtney. It's, uh, it's nice to have you here. Well, that makes waiting worthwhile, then. How is Stryker? Alive? Barely. Well, let's see what the terrible things people do to each other have made of the human heart. These are Stryker's x-rays? Yes. Yes, I just got them. I, uh, I wanted to look at them in peace and quiet before I... before I talked to Vicky. Well, how bad is it, Kevin? Look, you tell me. You made a promise to Stryker, didn't you? I made a lot of promises to Stryker. Well, there's, um, there's one you have to keep now. You said you'd be with Rena when she lost him. I think you better make up with her. There's no way Stryker's heart will ever function properly again. No. No, the damage is too great. There's there's no no hope at all. I'll have to go and see this. Stay tuned for the conclusion of Texas. How dare you accuse me of almost killing Stryker? You're the one who's responsible. You really 
really like to believe that, wouldn't you? You've always been the master of evading responsibility. 20 years of sneaking around with Alex Wheeler? Oh, you quiet down. I don't give a damn who hears me. I showed Stryker those pictures, but you're the one who's in them. You're the one who broke his promises and his heart, and you're still after Alex Wheeler. What are you talking about? I'm talking about that trip you made to Wheeler's office. You had to tip him off, didn't you? You just couldn't stand his, his dirty dealings to be plastered all over the TV news, could you? Yes, but that's all there was to it. Is it? Iris heard you. You said you loved him, didn't you? Didn't you? You couldn't even keep it to yourself with Stryker lying in your bed. But that's enough, Raina. No, it's not. It's not nearly enough. You're going to hear every word I have to say. Wheeler didn't say he loved you, did he? Because he'd already thrown you over for Iris, didn't he? Stop it, Rena. Why? Because I'm getting too close to the truth. You still think you've got a chance with Wheeler, don't you? Did you intend for Iris to overhear that conversation? Did you think it was going to get rid of her? No. You think you still have a chance of getting Alex back, and then it would be better for you if Daddy was dead, wouldn't it? Wouldn't oh. it? Well, maybe you've gone already. Maybe, maybe... Maybe you've gone on to something else. Oh, is that it? mad, Rena. Am I? You're the one who's mad. You're glad Daddy is dying. Stop it, Rena. It wasn't you're those pictures. It. If it was the pictures, he would have had the attack in my house, not yours. You drove him to it. How did you do it? How did you do it? How did you drive my Daddy to the edge? And you're in on it too, Kevin, aren't you? You're both in it. You both drove him over the edge. Didn't you? Didn't you? Join us each weekday at this time for the continuing story of Texas. <laughs>